Life. You went into the office today. Just tired from life, brother. Well, job's not done, so. Do you think that concert would be live, actually? Like live as in bumping or live as in live on Spotify? Live as in live on Spotify. I mean, I obviously yeah. know it's going to be bumping. I think it said, it's going to be. Please be advised that filming is taking place at this location. Your entrance will, into this area will serve as a voluntary agreement to appear in any Spotify-related content and manner you may have your voice, image, likeness, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> where, where is that? Where did you see that? It's like on X. And then it I says... Mean, yeah, that it says Spotify will be live streaming the days before radio concert. Yeah, then I imagine it'd probably be live. Let's see. Um, if there's anything like on Spotify, maybe. Cactus Jack and Spotify presents Days Before Rodeo, Ticketmaster, Days Before Rodeo 10, Spotify presale, tickets are sold out, be back soon. That's, I mean, that's probably to physically go to the concert, I would imagine, right? Yeah, it was. I don't, I don't understand. Watch. Like None of my shit is loading. Yeah, it's probably because you got hacked. It'd be awesome. Right, you ready? Yeah, I'm not. I am not seeing from what account did you see that on? I don't know, brother. I'm I'm just scrolling. I'm scrolling on Twitter. Just, just like random. Okay. I, I, I wasn't I've sure. Seen, it was like I've seen official. it. I, I've seen it like a lot. Like it's like, like my Twitter feed is like this. Yeah. yeah. Like somebody just cool. tweeted that out and said ATL. Like, that picture is so, that logo is literally so sick. God damn. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just like kind of what mine's popping up here, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you saw the Travis Scott fan page thing, probably, right? Probably. This notice? Yeah, pro yeah probably. Yeah, I would imagine... Oh my gosh, tickets are $400. I can't wait for Quavo to walk out. It's yeah. honestly low-key pretty cheap compared to like his actual concerts. They like were I'd, selling for they they've dropped for ten dollars. 
Yeah, I know. But I would rather like I'd pay four hundred dollars to go to that than like seven hundred to sit in the pit at like Utopia. One hundred one hundred percent. That album was like well, that mixtape was like one of the first ever mixtapes that like set it off for me. It was like no ceilings and that were like the two that started it all. Well, and there's fifth only fifteen hundred people in there. That thing is gonna be like dumb rocking. Yeah, that's gonna be so, so it'll be sad. like a small it's like a small venue. Yeah, I, I do hope that it's that they are streaming it or at least something so we can watch it. Yeah, if not I'll freak out. All right, dude, are you ready? Yep. All right, the Washington Commanders. This this is gonna be quick. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I mean, unless if you have like a, a bunch to say about the Washington Commanders, I just think that they're gonna be dog shit this year. But last year, four and thirteen, home one and seven, away three and six. Um, they cleared house. Obviously, it was time. Ron Ron Riv, Riverboat Riviera was just fucking the worst <laughs> coach ever. <laughs> um and just like so out of touch and then this offseason they hired dan quinn as their head coach cliff kingsbury as their oc and then adam peters as their gm and i thought all of this was going to be like all good but and because like it's like all right like let's let's uh get the commanders like a uh, new regime like new team owner like all this stuff but I just think the commanders are just cursed or something like that because what in the fuck, what in the Sam hell is going on? They, their roster additions this season we'll get into make absolutely no sense. I think that they draft, they, I think they drafted the worst quarterback out of the bunch and Jaden Daniels. And lastly, what the hell were they thinking about doing that trade today? Yeah. I, I thought that them like clearing house and like, getting Dan Snyder out of there and uh, bringing in a brand new coaching staff, brand new ownership group, like legitimately meant that things were headed in the right direction. And then they started signing guys and it just like, doesn't make any sense. This team's a clear blatantly obvious rebuild team. And some of the guys that they brought in, like don't make sense for a rebuild timeline. I mean, I specifically want to touch on the trade, and then we can obviously get into that. Like, you're obviously an Eagles fan. I like Jahad Donson. I think he's like, a, like, was a decent wide receiver for them. That just like didn't really get an opportunity to even prove himself slightly. Um, I mean, unless if he like just is like absolutely cooked. Like, what was the purpose of them doing this this deal? Yeah, I I honestly have no idea because he's shown that he's a feasible NFL wide receiver the last two seasons and just hasn't had great quarterback play the entire time. Um, so I, I don't know. Um, like we were texting about it, like that maybe there's another move in place, but honestly there's no, I said, I, but I mean, if they don't get realistic... Iuke, what was the purpose of doing this? No, yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, if there's no move after this and they just got rid of like, their wide receiver number two, then I don't know what the purpose was. I mean, yeah. draft capital, but like it's not it, John Dotson isn't 28 years old. Well, they also so spent a he, first round pick on him. And what was the draft capital that they got back for him? Yeah, they traded back to um, with the Saints in order to get Jahan Dotson and the Saints ended up taking Chris Olave with the pick that um, they traded to the Commanders. Yeah, but so, he was taken in the first round. But what did the Eagles give up yeah. for him? Oh, they gave up uh, a third and two sevenths, I think. I just feel like why take a guy in the first round and then just like give up on him like in two years? After like, two unless years. if he's cooked. Yeah, like, that's the only thing good? that would make sense. I don't know. I haven't like. I haven't seen anything this off season about him like being terrible in camp. It's pretty much just seemed like they don't really like him, but from like the last two seasons watching him play, there hasn't really been anything that would make me say that he's cooked, but I don't know. Maybe something happened in camp. I have no clue. 
Yeah, it's weird. Um, so Ross, let's go over the roster additions, and then I, I want to talk about the draft separately. Uh, they brought in Mariota, Austin Eckler, Zach Ertz, Jamison Crowder, Dante Flower Jr., Jeremy Chin, and Bobby Wagner. Uh, am I missing anybody? Um, I have here Dorrance Armstrong Jr. and Frankie Louvu. They also signed. Yeah, and Frankie Louvu. Um, I I don't know. I just think like first off, where in the world does Eckler, Zach Ertz, and Jamison Crowder and Bobby Wagner have any purpose being on this exactly? Team? Those guys are all at the back end of their career. They should all have been guys that are complementary pieces on like winning teams, maybe, and not guys that you sign if you are in a clear, obvious rebuild situation. They don't match the timeline at all. So um, just overall yeah, right, yeah. feels like wasted money. It felt like hey, we have this cap money to spend. Let's just spend it and see what happens. And that's not like a great plan. Um, but yeah, the, the their offseason was all over the board. But I can't well, blame these guys. Like, I guess if you're getting offered that much money and you're not seeing that from other teams, then... Sure. No, I know. I just think... I'm like questioning the team building. I'm not questioning the players. Um, right. No, I know I that. just think... I, I just don't really understand it i guess and also like they had the most cap space this offseason to spend and there were some decent players out there and they just didn't get any of the decent players who were available on the market so like you traded away like chase young and montez sweat yeah and you don't really have any picks to show for it anymore you didn't address really any of the problems that you had and now you just don't have any good players. Um, yeah, so your defensive line is worse off with the guys that you brought in. They're worse off. And on top of that, like we can go into the draft. Like obviously you take, take Jaden Daniels at two pe There's mixed reviews on him. We obviously have to watch it play out. But what I don't feel great about is that they didn't really address like the offensive line, the way that I would have liked them to like in the draft, they had some draft capital where they probably could have had an opportunity to trade up with another team to take one of those tackles who were going in the first round. And they just didn't. And they used their top two picks on Jaden Daniels and Jersaw Newton, which I like him, but like they don't need a defensive tackle. Yeah. Their offensive line was like one of the worst in the NFL last year. Yeah. They gave um, up 65 sacks last season, which was second. In the so, NFL. So I don't really know what the reasoning was on waiting until the third round to draft an offensive lineman. Um, I'm trying to pull up. There was guys that you could have packaged your 50. They had three second round picks. They yeah. could have packaged two of those to move up and taken um, another guy on the offensive line. Like Troy Fontenu went to the Steelers and... I think the Steelers picked in the late tw in the twenties, late twenties. Like you could have. I mean, Jordan made Morgan went in the late twenties. Graham Barton went yeah. in the late twenties. There's a lot of linemen that went in the late twenties. Yeah, they could have packaged two of those three second round picks and moved up and gotten one of those guys. Yeah. Um. So I just don't really like what they did in in this off season. Like from so like the offensive line's still bad. I I'm just thinking for like a Jaden Daniels success story. The offensive yeah. line is still bad. You just traded away somebody who could have helped him on offense with Jihad Dotson. And so, like, and, like, I just – what weapons do they – this this is a below-average skill group, and now you're pretty much asking Jaden Daniels to, like, do magic. This is screaming, like, Panthers last year. Yeah, it's. I think it's going to be really ugly. I I – feel very confident in saying that this is the worst skill position group in the NFL. Yeah. Um, I think, I think this is one of the worst teams period in the NFL. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Like I'm looking at this right now, their wide receiver depth chart is Terry McLaurin, um, rookie Luke McCaffrey. Um, I don't know who this, who D Jameson Brown Crowder, the Omni Jameson the Omni Brown and, Olamide Zacchaeus. And then at tight end, they have the kid that they just drafted out of Kansas State, Ben Sinat. I don't know if that's how you say his last name. And Zach Ertz. 
and then your backfield's Brian Robinson Jr. and Austin Eckler. Why would you sign Austin Eckler uh, if you have Antonio Gibson? You, you could don't have given have Antonio Gibson. No, I'm saying, why would you let go of Antonio Gibson and sign Austin Eckler? Like, just give that money to Antonio Gibson. I think I'd rather have him than Austin Eckler at this point. Yeah, I would. I think I agree with that statement. I mean, I, I don't you, think either one of those guys are game changers at this point, but we and, saw and how bad Austin Eckler was last year. And he probably signed for less with the Patriots. I mean, definitely signed for less with the Patriots, so... I don't know. I'm right with you. I just think it's – I don't know. I don't think Adam Peters is cooking. I think that's what we're gathering out of this situation right now. I've got the uh, the deal pulled up here with the Patriots. I mean, they signed him for – it looks like a three-year deal. Okay. Um, three-year, 11 mil. I don't know what the Eckler deal is lengthwise, but Eckler's getting – 4.2 um, mil a year. So they're about know, the same sucks. contract. That's and crazy that they got worse. the same. That's insane that they got the same contract. Austin Eckler might be cooked. Bro, he looks like he's running with jeans on and has <laughs> cinder block feet. <laughs> Sprinting with jeans on is crazy. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't really have much to say about this team. I think that their offense sucks. I think their defense is awful. I think that Dan Quinn hire is going to look bad. I think that we watched Cliff Kingsbury become very predictable. He was good in the beginning of the season on offense, but as time goes on, he becomes very predictable. Um, I just think that this roster sucks. I said this a while ago, but I thought that um, I thought that they were going to be on Merce record watch, and when we went over the – the Giants, I was like, well, the Giants are a better team than them. And like today I was texting Sprack and Sprack was like, dude, the Giants are not a better team than the Commanders. I'm like, Giants have uh, an elite defensive line. They have a better secondary. They have better linebackers. They have a better offensive line. They have better wide receivers. Like they, they're they just like yeah. legitimately just like a better team. And like I'm not saying Daniel Jones is amazing, but like Daniel Jones has won a playoff game before. He's and I'm he's I'm definitely def better than than Daniels as of right now. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say that like that that uh, he's the truth or anything like that. But like he's played football before and like has played for a long time. And like so, I'm not going to like completely be out on him. But yeah, I just don't think that this team's set up for success in any way, shape, or form. So. My 2024 prediction is worst record watch. Yeah. If there was ever an example of how to not set your rookie quarterback up for success, it's got to be this. Like the Bears did the complete opposite end of the spectrum. They're on a great, they're in a great spot. The commanders did the absolute opposite of what you want to do. You, they brought in worse talent. They got rid of a receiver. So they're just in a, terrible spot it's gonna be i mean thankfully Jaden daniels is a mobile quarterback because i think he's gonna be running for his life all season um but it, you're like you said earlier there's just like not much to say about about this team i think they're just gonna be really bad they're there's not really any bright spots out there for the commanders no. No, and, and and to round it off, I mean they're in the division with the with the Eagles and the Cowboys, and honestly, the Giants might get eight sacks on them when they play. I mean Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Dexter Lawrence like actually might eat this team alive. So like I, I just think this absolutely is, they're all they're all bad matchups for them. But yeah, I mean the Commanders are are going to be dog shit this year. They're the pan they are the Panthers this year. I think that they are one hundred percent going to finish with the worst record. Where is Eric Bieniemy? In UCLA. Is he actually? Yeah. Remember just, when? I, okay. Remember when everybody was crying that he wasn't a head coach, and after two years, he's in college. Like, th there's yeah. a reason why he wasn't a head coach. Like, yeah, I. A lot of people, it was just like maybe he's a bad interviewer, but he was a horrible OC last year. And I know that they didn't have like 
a ton to work on, but it just goes to show that it wasn't all Eric the enemy, if really any, um, when it came down to like the chief success, it pretty much sums it up to Andy Reed and Patrick Mahomes is what it feels yeah. like now, because this offense last year, they were, they had, I mean, they threw the ball, what, probably more than anybody in the NFL, but yeah, they did actually. They passed the ball most in the league and had the most dropbacks, but somehow just like couldn't complete down the field passes. Well, um, I mean, Sam, I mean, Sam, Sam, Sam Howe was kind of slinging. I'm not going to lie. At moments, yeah. But if you can't run the football and he has to drop back and throw it 60 times a game, that's probably not a guy that I want throwing 60 times a game. No, you're probably right. But, dude, honestly, let's end this. <laughs> like I don't think like, I know any there's nothing to talk, fans, I feel there's really nothing to talk about. I mean there's I mean J Max a commander fan, Trey's a commander oh, yeah, fan. Yeah. They suck. Like I there's not much more to talk about. Like they're not gonna be good this season. So yeah, that's it's gonna get ugly. Let's move on. Okay, do you want to do the three teams that we're buying stock on? Yep. Three teams that we are buying stock on this upcoming season. I'm going to start this time since you started last time. The first team that I'm going to be buying stock on is the Carolina Panthers. Um, I think that they're going to be infinitely better than last season for multiple reasons. I think that they finally have Bryce Young paired up with somebody who's going to bring the best out in him. He's surrounded with a lot of good talent. I mean, Jonathan Mingo, uh, Adam Thielen, if he still has anything left in the tank, they drafted Xavier Leggett. They traded for Deontay Johnson. Uh, they drafted Jonathan Brooks, the uh, the running back out of Texas, and they still have Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders. Uh, they realized that they really messed up last season by not doing that. I think we're going to see a big leap from the Panthers this year because they're still in a weak division. Uh, they added a bunch of talent on this team to kind of bring the best out of Bryce Young. And lastly, I am just not going to be the guy to buy the Falcons hype because the last like two to three years, everybody has told us how good the Falcons were supposed to be and like blah, blah, blah. This sat in the third. I genuinely am not just saying this to like get a reaction. I think there's a real chance that the Panthers can can win this division. I mean, the Bucks were dead last in odds to win this division last year and they went out and won. Nobody thought the Buccaneers could win this division, and they went and did it. I kind of am viewing this in a similar situation with the Panthers where Dave Canales knows all of these defenses really well. He went against them all last year, including the Bucs, in practice and stuff, and I think that we're going to see a brand-new Panthers team, and like I said, I'm not buying the, the hype on the Falcons, and I said this to Colton the other, to, this morning because he was like, Falcons are going to be so tough this year. I'm like, I thought that Maybe. at first. And ultimately, Kirk Cousins is 36 years old. We know what he is. And real quick, like, do you know how many playoff games Kirk Cousins has won in his entire career? Um, I want to say three. One. He's won one playoff game in his entire career. We have this, this book on Kirk Cousins. He is unable to get teams over the hump and win in those big spots. Panthers sleeper team this year to win their division. And if they don't win the division, I still see them taking a big step. Was the uh, playoff game that Kirk Cousins won the, uh, you like that? I have no idea. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me, but um, either way, that was a one, I, that I, was a one o'clock game. Was it? I don't know. Just fucking <laughs> it was one o'clock. It was a one o'clock game at, uh, at on week three. Now go ahead. <laughs> um. So as I was doing this, I as I was writing my three teams down, I did have the Panthers as one of my teams, um, but I brought an extra just in case you did pick them. I, I'm right there with you. I'm about to go bet on on their win total over. Um, I think it's pretty disrespectful. I think it was what four and a half games, five five games. Um, yeah. I think this is going to be a much better team. That division is just such a crapshoot that it feels like anybody can beat anybody on any given day, on any given weekend. In there, um, 
So I just don't like, I, I just don't feel great putting my stamp of approval on like any of these teams. Like, I don't think the Saints are going to be good. Can the Falcons be good? Yes, but we've seen them go nine and eight the last two years with r- relatively higher expectations than they probably should have had. Um, and then, like you already mentioned, the Bucks were projected to finish last and they won the division. So um, I'm right there game. with you. And a playoff game. Um, with that said, though, I will give you my first team, and that's the New York Jets. Um, I'm in a similar spot with with this division, too, outside of the Patriots. Like, Bills, Jets, I don't think the Dolphins are going to be good, but I think a lot of people probably do think that. Um, I think I think the Bills, Jets, and Dolphins, I think it's probably a crash shoot between those three teams, too. And when it comes down to the best defense, the best running back, um, probably the second the second best receiver in the division, and then the best quarterback probably in that division, I think the Jets have all of those. Um, I feel really good about them winning that division, and odds are that they probably have a top five defense again. And I think Aaron Rodgers still has some elite football left in him, so um, I'm buying. Jets stock. I already bet on their win total over. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm on the Jets. Yeah, I mean, I said I said it in June that I was that they were going to win the Super Bowl. So not not really much for me to add there. No. Um, and they have the fourth easiest schedule. The next team that I am going to be buying buying the hype on or buying stock in is the Chicago Bears. Um. I think that this team's a, a Super Bowl team. I think I and I know that like that sounds crazy or whatever, but I don't think so. I mean, we watched rookie quarterbacks a few over the years who have been special be able to take teams to the Super Bowl. Uh Ben Roethlisberger did it, Russell Wilson did it. Um I think that this team has a lot of potential. First, obviously, the Roma Dunze, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, um, Khalil Herbert, DeAndre Swift, Cole Komet with a decent offensive line, and Caleb Williams' offensive core. I I don't see any reason why this unit can't finish as a top 10 unit in the NFL. I just don't, unless if something goes brutally wrong. On the other side of the ball, I think that we're going to see a massive jump from this Bears defense. Uh I wish that they would have got Matt Judon and it would have been solidified maybe a little bit more, but I think that this could be a top 10 unit on the defensive side of the football as well. Um, Their division is full of killers. I compl- I'm completely aware of that, but I think that there's a lot of people who are hot. You hear every, every single person in media and everywhere is just like, Yep, the Packers are going to win the Super Bowl this year. The Packers, the Packers, the Packers. Like, people are still really high on the Lions, uh, and nobody's really talking about the Chicago Bears. I think that this team is is slept on in full, and I think that there's a very real possibility to argue that this offense and defense might be the best in the division on both sides of the football. So. I think that we're going to obviously watch it play out and that might not happen, but I think that they're set up for that to be the a real possibility for this year. So I, I don't think the bears are like going to win like nine games. Like I think that there's a real opportunity that they could be like in the NFC championship. I think that this team's dangerous. I had the bears on my list as well um, yeah. for those. I think that it's, I think it's like blatantly obvious that, they're this year's Texans, but I think they're just a better put together football team. Yeah. I, I don't think it's talked about how enough about how good this defense could be. You said top 10 and I think they have a legitimate shot to be a top five defense. Yeah. When Montez sweat got there last season, he added just like an insane dynamic to them where they just played very, very well down the stretch and they have an all pro corner. They have an elite, um, elite guy in Montez Sweat. So, like, I re- I love this defense. Um, and I think it's going drastically under the radar with how good they can be. 
Um, and then on the other side of the ball, you pretty much covered everything. Like we've been saying that Caleb, we think Caleb Williams is going to be good for since I think we started this podcast. Um, and I, I still stand on that as well. I mean, they have talent at every position and he's a special, special football player. And you mix that with how good I think this defense could be. And I think, I think they're in the, I think they're in the playoffs for sure. And I expect them to, to at least win a game. Honestly, I don't know if I, I don't have them going to the Super Bowl. I'm not sure about that quite yet, but I do have them winning a playoff game. I think, I think they're this year's Texans, but they're built much better. I think that like, we're going to look back after the season and the secondary of Jalen Johnson, Jaquan Brisker, Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon, and Kevin Byard is going to be like a top unit. Specifically, I'm talking about the the two corners. I mean, I said last year that Jalen Johnson was a top top ten corner, and you didn't even know who he was, respectfully. Um, and I just think that they're we're gonna look back, and I think we've seen flashes out of Kyler Gordon that are positive. But I think that that is the group where I'm like circling when I'm like looking at this defense. It's like I really think that those young guys are gonna just take the next step and be elite. So they I also, just think they also have two really lot good linebackers. Like yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Trey, Trey, Tremaine Edmonds has always been a dog. So I, I'm right with you. I, I just I love this team a lot, and I just don't know. I don't know what there isn't to like about it. And I genuinely think Caleb Williams is like that dude. I just don't think. I don't think. I think if you don't think that, you're a hater. He's he is that dude. There's really nothing more to say. Yeah, uh, I have a fantasy point that I wanted to mention is there's so many defenses that are ranked like above the Bears in fantasy that um, you can get them. And I think you're sleeping on a like you're set up for a gold mine type of defense. Like there's the Chargers defense is projected to be better in fantasy than them. Yeah. And that's insane. I think probably because they have to play the Packers twice and the Lions twice, and they're both going to be top 10 offenses. So that's probably the reasoning behind that's that. That's fair. And the Chargers will play like fucking the Broncos and the Raiders. So that's probably why it's like skewed a little bit. I agree with you that I think that they could be a good group to play, but something to definitely watch out for is they do play killers in their division. They do. But if, they're as good of a defense as I think they're going to be. Um, I think you answer the call when you play those types of games. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah, well, since I'm, I'm I right took there with your, you. Since I took your yeah, second you, team, who's your third team? Um, my other, t- my final team is the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I just think they're. I think Kyler Murray, and you've been saying this a lot. Um, that guy just gets blatantly disrespected as an NFL quarterback. Um, he's for finally no going to have a, for a healthy, he's finally going to have a healthy season. Um, and he finally has some t- decent talent around him. Probably like we said in the Cardinals video, better than he's ever had. Um, but the one thing that like made me want to jump on this stock is pause. And I keep seeing videos and clips of people like, Oh my God, like the Cardinals under is like the easiest thing in the world. Like they have Kyler Murray, like they have, he, they made him sign a, a clause where he can't play video games. Like that's, we've talked about this at length and that's just a lazy point against Kyler Murray. Um, if you would have actually, like if these people would actually provide like a legitimate stat rather than he has to sign a deal where he can't play video games then like maybe i would take you more serious but if that's what you're going to throw at me then i can't really take you serious as uh, i can't take your opinion serious so i think their win total is six and a half but i saw nine games on their schedule that i think they can win um so i'm buying stock in the arizona cardinals yeah i I mean i completely agree with you the the cardinal the the kyler murray hate has just been like so corny and like cheesy like it's never 
anything real it's always like he plays too much cod and like blah, blah blah like there's never i've never heard like any real statement but what we do know is that kyler brings up all the talent around him and make them play better because of how elite he is at throwing the football uh and he can use his legs as well at an elite capacity uh kyler's a dog uh he's been a winner everywhere he's gone uh, he was a Heisman Trophy winner in college. Like he's and he's always been good. And I think what's different is that over the first few years of his career, he was talented. Obviously, one offensive rookie of the year, et cetera, got nicked up for some injuries during some seasons where I actually think that you could have made the argument that he could have been a potential MVP. He was playing at a top ten level for sure. And now he is older wiser has been the nfl for a little bit longer he clearly has a mentality shift and i think that we're gonna do watch exactly that happen is kyler have a special season along with the arizona cardinals yeah they gained a lot of momentum and played some good football at the end of last season and that pretty much started when they got kyler murray back and now they'll have a full off season of him being healthy of him working with Trey McBride with Marvin Harrison Jr. with with James Conner and um, I forget Benson's first name, but um, Trey Trey Benson. I think this team is going to sneak up on people, um, and I think Kyler Murray is going to go out there and be a big reason as to why. I completely agree. All right, my last team that i'm buying stock on is the jacksonville jaguars um we went over it when we previewed this team they were uh what eight and one and then uh trevor lawrence got dinged up with some bad injuries and things just started kind of going downhill from there um i think that this team is extremely talented and everybody is completely given up on them for reasons uh i don't really get uh, but ultimately, I think that their defense is a is a really good group of guys. I think their secondary is questionable, but I think that their DC should be able to get the best out of them. Uh, Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen Tyne are two dogs at, at the edge that I think are going to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And then from an offensive perspective, you still have Travis Etienne. I think that their offensive line can stay. If you got to have them stay healthier this year, that was a big problem last year. And then. You still have Evan Ingram. You still have Christian Kirk. You added Brian Thomas Jr., who has been – he looks pretty good, honestly, in preseason and stuff. He has. And lastly, you have Gabe Davis, which I understand if you watch and play fantasy football, you hate Gabe Davis. But Gabe Davis has a lot of stats that back up that he's an actual really great wide receiver. And I think that that's a good core and – I am excited to watch T Law be able to play with this core. And I think T Law is that guy at quarterback. There's I, I don't see why he wouldn't be. So uh I think Jacksonville has an extremely slept on defense. And I think everybody has kind of given up on their offense because T Law has the same stats as Mac Jones, like blah blah blah, this hat in the third. Like just throw all that shit out. Tre you've watched Trevor Lawrence play at a very high level, beat some of the best teams in the NFL come back from a huge deficit in a playoff game versus the chargers and win in the playoffs. Uh, he's won everywhere he's gone. Uh, I don't see why he wouldn't, why that would change now. Uh, so yeah, Jacksonville Jaguars is my final team that I'm buying stock on this season because everybody is just anointing the Texans when they just like really haven't done anything yet. So Jacksonville, I'm, I'm still riding with them. They also have better wide receiver depth than I thought. Like they have Parker Washington and Devin Duvernay as like backup wide receivers, which honestly I'll take those two guys as my as my fourth and fifth wide receiver um, on my team. Parker uh, Washington they also, was kind of sneaky last year. Yeah, when when Christian Kirk got hurt and Parker Washington had to step in, he had he had some good moments, and I thought Parker Washington was good at Penn State. I thought he should have stayed another year. Um, and I think he would have ended up being drafted a little bit higher, but nevertheless, like I don't hate that those two guys are your fourth and fifth receiver. They also have Eric Armstead on their defensive line too, to pair up with Josh Hines Allen and 
Trayvon Walker. So Josh Allen's fine. What I say, Josh Allen. Josh. I'm just kidding. I have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> it says Josh Hines Allen. Right I'm here. just fucking around. I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, I like I I really like that trio of guys on the defensive line for them, and I think they're they're going to cause some havoc. Yeah, I'm I'm right with you. But it, I, these teams that that we put together it just seems like it seems like the cat like the casual fans and the p and i'm not trying to like sit here acting like i'm like sitting on like a throne of fuck like a like sitting on my high horse acting like i'm like thinking of it like in depth or something like that but these are the team these are like the outcast teams that like everybody is sitting around being like, like everybody who like doesn't actually pay attention is still sitting around being like the panthers are the worst team in the nfl they have bryce young they suck like when in reality there are probably multiple teams who are going to be worse than them this year two that come off the head immediately are like the patriots and the commanders um yeah and i just think that like these teams are good teams that like early in the season like when they when things are mispriced like you take them like my my one of my favorite bets is week one is the arizona cardinals are plus 250 on the road in buffalo I mean, Buffalo has an entire new team. They have no linebackers. Kyler's going to be able to do damage on, on the ground against that team. I don't know. I just think that that's like a mispriced line. Like, I think it should be closer than that. Um, I think the spread is like six and a half points. Um, so, like, look for, for spots in the beginning of the season where these teams are clearly slept on right now, and I think that they could be good immediately out of the gate. I'm glad you brought that up because – I feel the same way about like the same teams that are constantly being talked about. Like I was just listening to, I think it was like one of the ringer shows and everyone has like the same five teams. Like, yeah, it's so uh, chiefs. It's like chiefs, Packers, lions, bills, niners, bills. It's just boring. That's like, okay, great. Like we know that those teams are probably going to be good, but like, I want to know the teams that are going to be in like the seven and eight and are ju- like getting into the playoffs that have a legitimate chance of winning against one of these, one of these teams. Also, what if, what if one of those teams that they always talk about have a down year and one of the teams who that nobody had on their radar pop up like the Texans, like, like the bucks, like teams who overplay expectation every single season like it happens every year it never the nfl never lays out the exact same way as it did the year before and i just feel like it's super lazy to just be like yeah like oh yeah like the three teams i'm buying stock on this year the lions the packers and the chiefs it's like okay great like that doesn't do anything so is everybody else like (laughs) no shit you think those teams are going to be good they won they all won 10 games last year yeah but and hey, not better well hey, we, not all of them but like we can't we can't sit around and and be mad at everybody but we can definitely give what we think is gonna happen and hey if we end up being right maybe this would be a good clip to break up put the date on and show everybody in the future that we were on top of it so those are our three teams that we're gonna buy stock on going into the 2024 season yeah i'm, I'm about to place my bet on the panthers right this moment all right brother have a good night all right go birds peace